All right, today is uh, Monday. It's the seventh day, a uh, week from when I got fired from Walmart for standing up against the pride thing in, their, in the back room and a uh, combination of that and me posting the video uh, about it um, like a month ago or something. Uh, I posted some stuff after I got fired, uh, but I did take down on TikTok the one video I did post. Um, I'd have to go back on YouTube to see which one that I posted because uh, I took it down off of TikTok um, just for, you know, because the manager um, mentioned something about it and I didn't really think it through. Should have just left it up. Uh, the manager is a, is a homosexual and, uh, you know, but she's always been respectful to me and I respected her at the business, but when it comes to the, the Word of God, and being on the street and preaching the gospel, um, I'm not a respecter of, of men and or their feelings, and definitely am not going to justify the sin because the Lord is going to cast all sinners into the hellfire on the day of ju judgment. So today I'm posting up for a, another preach, and you know I don't know how it's going to flow out today, but you see I took. <laughs> you know the stick hits and ripped them up, you know and made little spots, you know So I can go to what I want to read, you know, no no particular order um, I'd like to be more organized, but you know what verbatim uh, Whatever I don't even know what that means uh, It's just gonna be from the word and You know and I'm gonna speak uh, uh, on my on my own behalf, too, you know So so praise the Lord got this and uh, I'm actually right now I'm taking advantage of this dumpster as you can see so and I got this this really powerful magnet so I'm gonna stick it on the side so the traffic can see it and it's gonna be woe to them who call evil good and good evil and this is the type of stuff that uh, they practice in this store um, staff and uh, uh, lukewarm Christians um, want to come against the preacher. Uh, already saw, saw that by one young man that works here, push, pushes uh, carts around. He uh, he thinks uh, I should make it a different approach, and unfortunately, uh, the only approach to make is what's the Bible say? And if it says it, read it. Regardless, you can say it with with uh, all the compassion in the world or all the wrath in the world it don't matter the world uh, you're preaching the gospel just as God intended you to preach it so the general way of, uh, you can say it gently or you can say it firm or you can say it with <laughs> loud and, 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 and abrasive like with wrath with a wrathful voice it's all the same people are going to act the same regardless of how you preach the gospel uh, <laughs> it's just the way it is And you know what? I might as well just show you how well this works. <laughs> Check it out. Amen. That's a good magnet right there. You see that magnet? Right there by the A. Very powerful magnet. I found it in Sacramento yesterday when I stopped off to see a brethren. Quite a few brethren actually, street preachers in Sacramento. There's a couple here, but I don't have somebody to preach with all the time. Very, maybe one or two days out of the week, I'll have somebody around here that, that I can preach with. Um, other than that, I pray for the laborers and somebody that's willing to come preach with me is not going to be offended by the harsh words, which is the truth.
got this going on today. May the Lord have mercy on their souls. Jesus Christ, our only hope. And this is the reason why I got fired right here. Because Walmart uh, headquarters are trying, are protecting these people. Uh, when all the really are, all the world is really doing is uh, making sure that they're condemned unto to judgment, unto the wrath of God. But to love your neighbor and to love to love those people is to tell them the truth about their sin and that they need they need to turn from their sin so they'll they'll perish. But the world wants to protect them. They want to protect each other. Uh, living in a, a perverted lifestyle. Uh, the Bible is very clear that uh, this is uh, against nature, and it is, it is what it is. So if if the world's not willing to um, turn from their sins, then <laughs> they're going to perish. To love the Lord is to obey Him, you know. So a strong rebuke uh, is better than secret love and. I'm going to rebuke them today. Praise God. today praise the living God today my friends you know there's this day coming that shall burn as an oven let me read it to you straight from the scripture Let me read another uh, verse to you. 
This one's going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 10. Just uh, one more verse, another verse. There's many verses in the Bible that talks about the wrath of God and, the, and what's going, he's going to do to, to unrepentant sinners. Now check this out now. This is this is literally God's word that I'm 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 reading here. I'm not reading of my own. I'm not here to uh give you a message that it's all you know all good because it's not all good. Uh this world is wicked, it has fallen into darkness, and we have turned around and took the things that God hates and made it okay. Uh people are justifying the wicked and they're condemning the just. People are telling the, the holiness preachers that they're not loving. When If you could proclaim the gospel, regardless of how you feel about it, regardless of how you feel about the gospel being preached, if you don't like the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ and you're offended by it, maybe you should change your life and start submitting to the gospel rather than being offended by the one man that's telling you to turn from your sins Otherwise, you're going to perish. Uh, that's not my words. It's God's word. It's not my ways. It's God's ways. And God is reaching out to you today through, through a preacher to call you back unto himself, which is without repentance, there is no forgiveness of sin. And to repent is to turn and go the other way, to have a change of mind, a change of heart, to turn from your sins. Don't go back to your sins. If you go back to your sins, you're, you're no better off than, than you were when you were in your sin. If you stay in your sins, you will perish. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 10. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, Thank you. Hey. You got it right, right here. Two young men. This is your mom, Obey. That's the fifth commandment, right? You know your fifth commandment? Father, like mother, and I father. Thank you. I got, I got to get pretty harsh to hate on me. They fired me from here for saying it. It's right flagging that in Walmart. Um, and I posted on my YouTube, TikTok. TikTok's the one that, you know, they're a little bit. got a good memory. It's Michael Larson, CK. That's it. Wait, I actually, oh, you have? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hey, uh, if you did, if, just, just, just uh, look up Kaya Brewing Company. And, uh, I, I think my videos will pop up first. Yeah, the Bible says that his, his word does not return void. And that, uh, well, there's that sheep that went astray. You know, I feel like... No, they're not. Oh, yeah. Big button. my heart too that's why I'm out here I've been doing this for six years God I mean I've, I've been here since this is my seventh day in a row look my one of my brethren our brethren said Michael because after what I told him what happened here he said you need to go out in front of the and preach for seven days so not all day but you know an hour or two maybe today's my seventh day I might go a little extra long <laughs> I had a guy come around and he was a big baseball player.
happened, but I just act like he wasn't even there. He took my chances and he didn't do nothing. But he came up to me like this and right up my and I'm like, and then some guy come from the parking lot and, you know, backed me up on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's always somebody willing to come out. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> praise. Praise and pray. Amen. Thank you. Prayers are very all valuable. Amen. He hears the prayers of the saints. You're welcome. All right. Uh, a woman just stopped and thanked me for my preaching when yesterday I heard about people hating me in Walmart, the staff and all that. Oh, well. Uh, they're going to hate. Uh, but the, the true believers aren't, and, and those that have an ear to hear um, definitely appreciate the word. Uh, but yeah, she had two little boys with her, and she, she'd give me, keep doing what you're doing. And uh, the two little boys, I was like, and he goes, I've seen you on video, I've seen you on YouTube, I've seen you on YouTube. And he was all excited, so praise the living God. Praise God, amen. little sidetracked uh praise the living god uh this lady stopped and thanked me for what i was doing and uh you know just praise all glory to the lord jesus christ praise god uh very encouraging um it's even encouraging for you those of you that come against me too you know because you're the ones that i'm really trying to reach you're the ones i'm trying to reach uh the ones that are coming against the gospel of jesus christ and against his the ones that are preaching the gospel it's not me that you're coming against it's it's against the lord jesus christ it's not me that you hate you just hate the message that i'm preaching because it tells you to turn from your sins and to obey the lord jesus christ and that your days are numbered and you, and you guess what you're going to get worked up you better start getting worked up into the lord rather than getting worked up that you can't repent from your sins it'd be a good day that you turn your life around and give it to the lord before it's too late that's why i'm here because the message is urgent. You know, I've lost a couple of brother, a brother at the age of 28. He died in his sin. He's not with the Lord. I just recently lost my baby sister. She was found in a shed over here on Pomo Lane, dead, because she mixed some things together. She's not with the Lord. She's, she's going to perish. My brother's going to perish. It's very easy to judge a tree by its fruit when you obey the gospel. And the Bible says that God only loves them that obey him. And if you're not obeying the gospel, then you're not a child of God. Everybody, people want to say like these new churches and these, the way the churches are today, well, judgment will start with the house of God because they're not teaching the whole counsel of God. They're, they're trying to tickle your ear so that you'll stay in their congregation and give them money. However it may be or whatever it may be, our churches are dead today. If they're not preaching repentance and they're not driving out, the sinners out of the church because church is not for sinners it's for saints it's for the body of believers those that want to live for the lord that love the lord in obedience to his scripture praise the living god today now here it is unrighteous people will not inherit the kingdom of god know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god be not deceived neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, that's all you LGBTQ homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now listen to this, if you turn from your sins today, if you turn, like literally, turn from your sins and don't look back on your sins, uh, don't give in to your temptations, uh, seek out the Lord so that he gives you a way out every time and you hold fast till the end You'll be saved. The Bible says in verse 11 and such were some of you But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by his spirit of our God You get justified by the Lord Jesus Christ when you turn from your sins and he'll his, his, the, the, the shed blood you know that blood almost that uh, you're gonna pay with your own blood you know almost all things were purged in blood but without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sin and jesus christ shed his blood for you so, so your sins can be washed away praise the living god but if you're living in sin you're in big trouble you gotta repent you might die this might be your last day and if you die in, in your sins 
and all these sins that I just named off, and this is an exhaustive list. There's pot smokers, there's drug users, there's a, 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 anything and everything that is of the world separates you from God. The only thing that brings you unto salvation is the whole word of God, the gospel, which you are to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine and correction and reproof and righteousness. You hear that? Righteousness. The Bible says you are to practice what is righteous. Righteousness. And the Bible says he who practices it is righteous. And I practice righteousness. And uh, people want to say, well, you're being proud. You're being proud. No, I'm just glorifying God and telling you that a righteous man practices righteousness and he loves the Lord. There's nothing proud about that. There's nothing prideful about that. I love the Lord, and I humble myself in, in the eyes of the Lord. But when it comes, comes up to going out and preaching the gospel of salvation, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And it's the power of God and the salvation to them that believe and obey to the Jew first and then to the Greek. And the fact that I am not a coward, that no, the Bible says no coward has any inheritance in God's kingdom. And that's talking about you Christians that are not willing to stand up in the sight of evil and tell them sinners about their sins and that they're going to go to hell, that they're going to perish. You can say it nicely. You can say it the way I'm doing it, doing it because I'm not doing it. I'm not one-on-one -on -one right now. I'm preaching to the open air to everybody. If you want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and be humble about it, we can do that. But I'm going to be about the gospel. I'm not here to hear about your personal feelings. Because your thoughts and your feelings have nothing to do with the gospel of Jesus Christ. The, the gospel of Jesus Christ is go the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it is to be separate from all things. The word of God stands alone, and it is to be alone in itself, in its interpretation. It's not the mind of man, it's the mind of God. And if you want to know God, you got to get in his word, and you got to use his scripture with scripture. Do you know the Bible has over 67,000 cross-references over a period of how many pages? King James Bible, I got how many pages here? a number for you. Okay, there's 67,000 cross-references in the Bible. That's uh, such a numerous number, it's, it's unreal. The, the, this book can only be uh, the Word of God. Praise the living God. From Genesis to Revelation 22:14, 14, 21, through tw uh, 21 the, the last page of the Bible, I got 1,480 pages. And there's 67,000 67, 997,000 cross-references in the Bible. Yes, <laughs> we're talking about the Word of God here. And the fact in the Old Testament alone, the Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled over 300 prophecies. Now, come on, man. Who else can do that other than God? You know what the likelihood of fulfilling just eight prophecies? It's like you taking uh, the state of Texas making that state two, two feet deep with silver dollars, you taking one coin, marking it, and then throwing it out of a helicopter, turning all these coins up, like you'd shake a, a hat, right, and mix everything up, and for you to reach down and grab that one coin. That's the odds of you fulfilling just eight. And the Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled 300 prophecies alone in the Old Testament. And now the prophecies of the last days, of the end days, are here. They're being fulfilled right now. The Bible says that on May 14th, 1948, you know, the nation of Israel, when they became a nation again, yes, that generation, the Bible is very clear, they will see the second coming of Christ. And what is the generation in the Bible? It's in Isaiah, I believe. It's 70 to 80 years. That end of that generation is 2028. Look at how far the world has fallen in the last couple of years. How it 
that's been given up to the to the things that God hates, like homosexuality and baby killing and people falling away from the Lord and making up a Jesus that, that they like, that, that, that makes them feel good. When it's not about feeling good, it's about obedience to the Lord and keeping His commandments and living a holy and righteous life. You know the Ten Commandments? If you don't know the Ten Commandments, I would suggest that you learn them. And then, because uh, all the commandments are based on every sin. They fit somewhere in those Ten Commandments. The first commandment is nothing comes before God. What are you putting before God today? You could be justifying and patting the sinners on the back, right? Ignoring the preacher and telling you to turn from your sins. Oh, he ain't preaching right. Oh, that's the lukewarm Christian. That's the ones that don't want to fully submit to the gospel. They're worried about people's feelings. Are you worried about people's feelings? Or are you going to get worried about people's souls? Because the soul is where it's at. Your soul is eternal. Your feelings don't matter. If they don't, in the eyes of a holy and righteous God, when you keep falling into sin and, 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 and keep repeating it over and over and over again, you show that you don't love God, that you have a worldly sorrow, but you don't have a holy sorrow, a sorrow meant unto repentance, which is to love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, to turn from your sins and to obey the Lord, which is to love Him. And then when you love the Lord in obedience to His gospel and repentance of all sins, you go out and tell the world to turn from their sins. You know what Jesus Christ said after he was tempted by the devil? If that 40 days, then you know, like man shall not eat or live uh, by bread alone, but every, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. What did Jesus say? He said, repent, turn from your sins, is what he's saying, because the kingdom of God is at hand. Because the kingdom of God is at hand. Your life is but a vapor of time, and you're going to die. It's a 100% guarantee that everybody is going to die. No exceptions. There's a, there's a, there's a time coming that there, there's going to be men that, and mankind that's not going to see death. And that's when the Lord Jesus Christ uh, raptures the true believers, those that obey the gospel. That's, those are the ones that are not going to see death. And that, guess what? That, that's this generation. This generation is going to see the second coming of Christ. Are you going to be saved? Are you going to be caught up with the Lord in the twinkling of an eye? Or are you going to just live in the world and be a friend of the world and an enemy of God? James chapter 4 verse 4, adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? Whatever it is that you put before God in this world, your enjoyment of the world, is it, it makes you an enemy of God. If God, if, if you're not like in your Bible reading your word and obeying the gospel, um, I'm telling you today, you better wake up. Because God's word is holy. And uh, we should be holy before a holy and righteous God. And we're destroying our temples today with drugs and alcohol and sinful behaviors and dishonesty and against God. And you know what the Bible says about he who destroys the temple? The Bible says God will destroy. This is the word of God here, my friends. Hell yeah, brother. Amen. 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 Hey, you guys need Jesus, man. You better seek the Lord. You're, you got a false religion, my friends. Mormonism can't help you. It's going to send you to hellfire if you don't repent. Only the word of God. The King James Bible, that's it. Quit reading them other books, my friends. You know, there is only one way, and Mormonism isn't it. Buddhism isn't it. Catholicism is not it. Atheism is not it. Jehovah Witnessism is not it. It's Christianity. We were first called Christians in Antioch. You know Antioch, the day of Pentecost, after Jesus Christ rose up to be with the Father, at the right hand of God, you know that you know that when Jesus Christ rose in, with over 500 eyewitnesses, because if He didn't go to the Father, that the Holy Spirit could not be poured out onto the world. And when that day of Pentecost, the 3,000s were saved. Yes, my friends, they were first called Christians in Antioch. That's it. That's where it really started. But really, the Lord, 
the, the, the gospel started in the garden. And by ho and, and then holy men of old, who were under the inspiration of God, were the, the word of God. And then God took his word and took men to write it down in a book. It's called the Bible, you know, the 66 books with over 40 authors that every knee's going to bow and every tongue's going to confess to. Everybody is going to confess to the Lord Jesus Christ. No exceptions. If you're living in sin, you're in big, big trouble. If you're not warning the, the sinners to repent of their sins, and I'm talking to you Christians, you're in big trouble too because you're denying the Lord Jesus Christ before man. And, and the truth, and the truth only sets you free from God, free from your sins if you're out confessing it and obeying the gospel. If you're, if you're denying the Lord Jesus Christ before man, when you die and you're before the Father, he's going to deny you. You can confess Jesus Christ all you want as your own Lord and Savior, but if you're not living by the Word of God and preaching the Word of God, you're no better off. Matter of fact, you're worse off than anybody. You're worse off than the, the stone-cold man that hates God. You're worse off than the stone-cold sinner. You're that lukewarm Christian that God uh, specifically singles you out. He will divide you in half and cast you into hell fire. He will chew you up and vomit you out of his mouth. This is love because I'm warning you today, you better repent. You better repent because God's grace and mercy is not going to apply on you if you're going to die in your sins. He'll, his grace and mercy apply to them that love him. You know, I think it's in Titus chapter 2, uh, for the grace of God has appeared to all men everywhere, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly and righteously in this present age, looking for that glorious day when our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, did you hear that? Our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, when he returns, the grace of God teaches you to live soberly and righteously in this present age. And if you're living in sin, you're not living righteously. There's nothing righteous about sin, any sin. What's righteous is you submitting to the gospel of Jesus Christ and putting him before all things. You remember that first commandment I said earlier? Nothing comes before God. What are you putting before God? What about that second commandment? Most of you are breaking that one just right off and not obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ, not being in your word, because you're creating another Jesus, you're following another God. And the Bible says in the second commandment, don't bow down to any other gods or any graven images. What are you bowing down to? Are you bowing down to your life, to your God, you? You're created in the image of God, but you ain't God. And if you ain't obeying the gospel, you're not a child of God either. You're a child of wrath. You're a child of the devil. People don't want to read their Bible or the pastors don't want to tell you the truth. They just want to tell you, oh, all are child, children of God. No. The Bible says a child, the child of God is the man that obeys them. That's a child of God. The woman of God is the one that obeys the Lord. That's a child of God. The Bible is very clear. If you're, not a, if you're not obeying the gospel, you're a child of disobedience. And you're of your father, the devil. Stop disobeying the Lord. It's a simple decision to make. You freely chose to sin against God, right? You took that free will choice when you knew it was wrong, but you keep doing it anyway. Well, take that same free will choice. And like you condition yourself to live in sin, condition yourself to live a holy and righteous life. And suffer for it. Because God died for the sins of the world. And therefore, for what he did on the cross, don't you think your reasonable service and a light service is that you obey him? That's a light service, to suffer for the sake of the gospel, just to go do what God says is right. And to resist your, your flesh and that temptation that you, that you want to fulfill every time you pick up a cigarette or a joint or a beer or a, or a bowl or look at a woman in lust or watch a porno. Or, 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 or be cheering on your favorite uh, football team and, and not meditate, not even giving God any glory anywhere. You know what I mean. This is an eye opener. You got to open your eyes. But if you're resisting the gospel of repentance, um, your, your eyes are not going to be open. If you're concerned about uh, the, the, the feelings of, of the people and their lifestyle and the preacher coming against it, their sin, then I don't know what to say to, say to you. 
Um, you obviously, there's people that say they're in the Word, and yet they come against the preaching, and uh, I'm preaching the Gospel. I'm not, I'm not preaching my mind. I'm preaching the Word of God. Praise the living God. What's that third commandment? Do not use God's name in vain. And what's the one name that every, probably every living soul uses as a cuss word more than any other name? Because there's no other name. You don't use your mother's name in vain. You don't use Buddha's name in vain. You don't use all these other false religions' names and Mary's name in vain. You use the Lord's name in vain. That's what you do. Just about most everybody has used God's name in vain. And sometimes it's all day long. And sometimes it's it with an accident because it's so common among the lips of mankind. Common that people use God's name in vain. But God will forgive you. He forgives. But you got to give your life to him in obedience to his gospel, the whole word of God. It's not picking and choosing with God. It's either or. You're either a saint or you're a sinner. You're either saved or you're not. You know what I mean? It's hellfire or heaven. It's one or the other. You're either for the Lord or you're against Him. You can't have it both ways. It doesn't work that way. And, it's, and the Bible is very clear on that. What's your fourth commandment? It's to, to keep the Sabbath. And you want to know what? The Lord Jesus Christ is Lord of the Sabbath. When Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave, He became Lord of the Sabbath, and He's our rest. And that's not a one day a week thing. That's every day. You find your rest in the Lord Jesus Christ. He, he is our rest. He's, that's eternal. Every day. At, right now at time, it's seven days a week. Jesus Christ our, is our rest. But when we die and we go be with the Lord, he's, that's an eternal rest in the Lord. Praise the living God. What's the fifth commandment? Honor thy mother and thy father. Right? Are you honoring your father? Or the, are you honoring the father in heaven? If you're not, you're of your father the devil. And to honor your father in heaven is to submit to the gospel of Jesus Christ in full obedience to it. If you know it to be sin and you give in to it, there's a problem. You're not saved. Now that ignorant stuff is another thing, but you can confess that and bring it back into obedience as fast as it came to your mind. The, the moment that you're falling into ignorant sin, you can be corrected. You will be corrected because the Holy Ghost lives inside of you when you freely choose to give up all your willful sin. It's a definite, art, definite that you can get to do all things through Christ. Take it from somebody who knows. I'm a Lord. I, I love the Lord, and I literally I obey Him. I don't give in to sin. There's sinners. There's uh, there's Christians out there, right? That that don't want to hear about the holiness preacher and and the fact that we can obey the gospel. I had a conversation with an employee here. And it, it bothers them and it angers him the fact that a man can actually live and walk according to the scripture and love the Lord and turn from all of his willful sins and stay that way. That's a lukewarm Christian or that's somebody that's not willing to give up their sins or hasn't. And they're not willing to hear the truth. That's a lukewarm Christian. If you're not willing to hear the truth and you want to come against somebody who says that they're a saint and that they love the Lord in obedience to him and they don't give in to sin, if you have a problem with that, May, it, it, there's an issue in your life and you haven't turned from it and you and you think that I can't turn away from my sins because you're not turning away from yours the next time that sin pops up take a free will choice and not to do it here's my say okay well you got this homosexual lifestyle that they're pushing on the employees in the back room and I got fired for standing up against it and posting a video of it on my tooth on my TikTok and YouTube channel right I posted it Anyways, I lost my thought a little bit, but, um, you know, God commands us to turn from our sins. He literally commands us to turn from our sins. Jesus Christ literally said it twice, go and sin no more. You know, go and sin no more, Jesus Christ said. When God says something, you're dope. you should listen to what he says. No more literally means no more. And if Jesus is talking to you, and you're created in the image of God, and he says, go and sin no more... That means that we have the ability to do it because Jesus, we are not only created in the image of God, and God is willing to pour His Spirit out on us when we turn from all of our sins, there's the ability right there. There's the doing all things through Christ who strengthens us. Now I remember, see me, I used to be really into pornography and lust and, 
and, and, and you know, that masturbation stuff. Uh, you know, I was in drugs and lost in that stuff. And I freely chose, and it's no different than any other sin. It's no different than somebody being a homosexual and being tempted by homosexual desires. Um, I just chose not to entertain those thoughts anymore. And I've been doing that for six years. Praise God, all glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. But then on the other hand, there is that free will thing where you got to freely choose whom you're going to serve. you got to choose to give it up. God's not going to take it away from you. It's for you to give up. And when you give up those sins, the Lord will sup with you. Literally, because you're doing it for the Lord. You're not doing it for your own. It's good to do it for your own, but do it unto the Lord. And for the salvation of yourself and those around you that see the light of the gospel proceeding from you. By crying aloud, lifting up thy voice like a trumpet, like the Bible says in Isaiah 58, 1, I believe. I might be wrong. But the Bible, there's so many scriptures in the, in the Bible that talks about going into all the world and preaching the gospel um, but on the highways and the byways. Whether you want to hear it or not, because it's not about what you want to hear. It's about your soul and what God has to say and that he is crying out to you today. He literally, God is crying out because he doesn't want to pour his wrath out on you. He does not want to turn, pour, turn his wrath out on you, but yet he still gives you the chance and the life, a breath of life to still seek him. The grace of God teaches you to deny ungodliness. You're not saved by, you know, you're saved by grace, but the grace teaches you to turn away from your sin. And the fact that you're still breathing is God's grace and mercy. God does not save those that, that, that don't turn from their sins. God don't even hear, I mean, if you're sitting here confessing your sins unto the Lord, right? And you keep going back to your sin, come on, that's like you bringing your, you being a husband, and you bring a girl home to your house, right? And you, and you sleep with her in front of your wife, and you don't care about what she says or sees. God sees everything. God sees everything, my friends. Everything God sees. God bless you, my friend. I love you. <laughs> God bless everybody that's willing to hear the word of God. And God bless those uh, with repentance, the ones that are not willing to hear the, the word of God. You know, the only problem is, is you want to justify your sin, your lust, and call it love before a holy and righteous God who says no. you got to learn what God says is no and what God says what is yes. Period. You can't, st you can't just live your life and think you're good with God because you feel good. something of the world, of the flesh, makes you feel good. Therefore, you think it makes you feel good, it's okay in the eyes of the Lord, or God say, well, he'll forgive me. He died for all my, my past, present, and future sins. Um, if you love him, he did. But if you're not willing to submit to him and turn from your sins, the love of the Father is not in you, and you're not going to be saved, period. Clear as day if you get in the Bible and read scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture. Very, very clear that God commands all men everywhere to repent because there's coming a day when the Lord's going to judge the world in righteousness. And there's a reason why God says to practice righteousness and who that practices righteousness is righteous. It's because you have to live a righteous life and be on fire for the Lord when you die. You can't have no doubts when it comes to the Lord. You can't have no doubts. And your doubts are you living in sin. For one, you need to give it up. If, if, if you're living in any sin and you have any doubt about being saved, well, take that side that you're not saved because that's your answer. That's the biblical answer. Praise the living God today. What's that sixth commandment? Thou shall not commit murder. You know, the Bible says if you're angry with your brother or anybody, your sister or or your friend, or whoever it is, without a cause. And what's the cause? Uh, being angry at sin. That's a good cause. That's a good anger. That's a good hatred, to have hatred for sin. It, 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 regardless of what it is, um, it's murder. Even if you have not committed the act, the Bible says the act of the being angry with your brother without a cause, you have committed murder, and you're worthy of death. It's a sin. That right there needs to be have the shed blood of Christ. Literally. I know what since I've been saved, I've found anger in somebody. But you know what? I know how to think. I, I, I know how to, whether I'm angry or not. I, I, I can bring my thoughts into captivity just like you under the obedience of Christ and, and sin not. The Bible says to be angry and sin not. Praise the living God. I can be as angry as flaming fire 
and I can look as angry as flame and fire like I want to destroy, and guess what? I can still be under the obedience of Christ and sinless. I can still be minded of Christ. Even though I'm angry, I'm sinning not. Because just because I'm angry don't mean that I'm sinning. And just because, and I'm preaching the whole counsel of God, you want to get angry with me for preaching the counsel of God? <laughs> you're angry with God and, and the fact that you got, you're not willing, you, you have to give up your sin. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. You're straight up suppressing the truth in your own sins and your own unrighteousness. Suppressing it. But it doesn't make it go away, man. Women, it doesn't make it go away. Praise the living God. Submit to the Lord before it's too late. God's grace and mercy, He wants to pour it out on you. But the only time you get grace and mercy, God's grace, is when you turn away from your sin. That's it. If you don't turn away from your sin, there's no grace. God's mercy is the fact that He still allows you to have the breath of life. And you're still breathing God's air, so He's, he's still up there having mercy on you, but he's, he's very angry with the wicked every day. That's Psalms chapter 7, verse 11. And God even goes even harder than that. He says that he hates. Yes, the Lord says that he hates all workers of iniquity. That's sinners, if you're living in sin. That's a strong, strong word. That comes from uh, God who in him is no light at all. I mean, there's no darkness at all. Excuse me. There's no darkness in God at all. But in, it, in us, they are, there's darkness. That's why we got to seek the gospel to get the light of the gospel in our life. And, and so that when we, when we meditate on God's word and we, and, we, and we keep God first in our life and our thoughts and deeds and the Holy Spirit's living inside of us, right? When that darkness comes, the Holy Spirit and your mind being trained up in the Holy Ghost in, in the scriptures and meditating on the word of God, you're keeping that darkness away at, at bay. Until God comes and parts the sky, or you die, and then God gives you a glorified body, or He gives you a, a spirit of, of, of sinlessness, where you don't fall into sin anymore. Because that's how it's going to be. But you got to prepare yourself now. Now's the time to prepare yourself while you got the breath of life. Now's the time to cry out to the Lord in obedience to His gospel. Because you don't get a second chance when you die. There's no such thing as purgatory. When you die, you're either... An, a, a faithful and obedient servant under the Lord, under the gospel, which is what God's going to say to the true believers, welcome, faithful, and trustful servant, or you're going to be, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. And that's what, regardless of the sin, whatever that sin may be, if you're not willing to forsake it, not only are you guilty of breaking the whole law of God, the Bible says, <laughs> but the, you're going to perish, man, straight up perish. Praise the living God today that you have an ear, and God gives us ears to, to the, at least hear the gospel, but, it, you know, the gospel falls on deaf ears. The people are still going to go get, use their drugs. The people are still going to go get drunk. They're still going to fornicate. Uh, some of you are going to keep going back to the Lord saying, God, please forgive me, and then you're going to feel guilty or sad, and then you're going to go right back to your sin. How do you feel? To know, I'm going to tell you, this is what you need to know. You're smacking God in the face. You're numbifying the blood of Christ. You're making it worthless. If you sin willfully after those things that you know to be sin, to you it is, <laughs> there's no more sacrifice for sin. You're, for, you're forfeiting your own soul by going back to your sin. It's like a dog going back to his vomit. You keep going back to your sin. Why? Just to make a free will choice and choose not to go back to your sin. I was addicted to drugs and cigarettes and a, a whole bunch of other things. People here on the street know me and know that I was. They hear me, they've been hearing me preach for six years. And I love every one of them. But I'm not going to cupcake anything. If what I say is addresses them and their lifestyle, well, it's because I love you. And I want you to repent of your sins. What's wrong with that? Nothing's wrong with that. I'm showing true love. I'm showing compassion for those that are living in sin. By telling you to turn from your sin, praise the living God today before it's too late and give and repent of your sins. It's a simple, it's a decision that you need to make. God's not going to make it for you. Praise the living God. He's living. And with his, with his love comes his wrath, his judgment. <laughs> and the Lord Jesus Christ spoke more on hell 
than everybody in the Bible combined. Let's not forget that this is the God of wrath and not just the God of love. Matter of fact, God only expressed his love in one place in the Bible. To one man, Nicodemus, John 3.16. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, that's a past tense love, by the way, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, and you know to believe is also to obey the gospel, that, that goes hand in hand, in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Folks, you know this world's condemned already, right? He came to save you and to set you free from your sins. But that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. You love your sin. You don't want the light of the gospel. So you reject God's word and his holiness and and the fact that he got preachers out here preaching against sin. If you're that sinner and I'm preaching against you, homosexuals and drunks, and telling you to turn or burn, you're going to fry. Well, guess what? That's what God says he's going to do to you. And what's the most loving thing I can do? It's to tell you to turn your life around. Because you're going to die one day, and you're going to die in your sins, or you're going to die a faithful and trustful servant. You better make a decision, because it's not mine, and it's not God's. But God will give you a way out. He'll give you the desires to do it. He's drawing you unto himself. But you got to make the decision. It's your decision. The Bible says, seek this day whom you are going to serve. Are you going to serve the world or are you going to serve God? Are you going to serve yourself or are you going to serve God? Simple, it's a decision. If you're not willing to forsake your sins and suffer um, a, a little while like I did, um, you're... Well, there you go. This is the closest you're ever going to get to God right here, except on the day of, day of judgment. And that's not going to be a good day, being bound hand and foot by the holy angels, resurrected with a glorified body that can't be destroyed, and then cast into the lake of fire, where the smoke of your torment's going to rise forever and ever. Literally, that's the word of God. You want to take a chance and live your life according to your ways? There you go. There's your chance. You're playing Russian roulette. Um, guess what? You're going to lose every time until you draw nigh unto God and give your life to the Lord and open up the Word of God and, and read that Word, that magnified Word, the living Word, the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us. You're going to perish. That's not my words. I'm just telling you the truth. And you can hate me for it. You can be thankful for it. Or you can just not care. It don't matter. There's coming a day when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. All glory to the Lord. All glory to God. Praise the living God today. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. And he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, and they are wrought in God. Come to the light of the gospel before it's too late. And it's going to be too late one day. Don't let it be that way for you. We've all had loved ones that have suddenly died. And if you know what their lifestyle was and they weren't glorifying God before man, you know where they're at. You know where they're at. I'm not going to be gentle with you. I'm not going to tell you all they're good, like the way they, they a lot of people, when somebody dies, you have some man of God talk about being in a better place. <laughs> the odds of a better place for somebody who does not turn in the, in, in, from their sins and, get, and glorifying God, and are not glorifying God, there is no odds. You've perished. You've done, lost your opportunity to be with the Lord because you chose some sin, regardless of how much it is, over God, and you weren't willing to forsake it. 
God says to forsake your sins. He doesn't say go sin and ask for forgiveness and then go sin. He says to, to, to repent, which is to stop it. Literally means to go and sin no more. 180. Do you see anybody doing 180s? You can't turn around because then that would be a 360. Are you a 360 Christian or are you a 180 Christian and walking that straight and narrow path and not looking back? Which one are you? You're one or the other. You're either focused on the Lord and you're and you're walking faithful to Him, or you're not. You're either giving in to sin, or you're not. It's that simple. I know sin, and I know when it creeps up, and I know what not to do, just like you. And if, if sin creeps up and I'm unaware, the Holy Spirit will make me aware real quick. And if I sin, not when I sin, I have an advocate with the Father, and let's talk about ignorant stuff. He's faithful and trustful to forgive of all sin. But you got to give up the sin. That flesh and the spirit are in constant battle with each other. But you can get victory over the flesh because of the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. That's where the victory is. Praise the living God today, the living Word. This is awesome right here. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was the life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. If you're living in sin... You are not comprehending the light of the world. You know the light's there, but you're not comprehending it because you're holding on to darkness. Until you totally repent from all your sins, your eyes will never be open. You'll be a lukewarm Christian all your life. You'll, you'll come against the preacher who's preaching holiness and, and calling out sinners that they're going to perish. You're going to come against those preachers when you should give up whatever it is that you're putting before God, so therefore God can open your eyes. If you're living in darkness, any darkness, regardless of what it is, you're blinded. Until you give it up, you are blinded. And being a lukewarm Christian is the worst type of Christian that you can be. To stand up and, and justify the wicked and to not say anything by keeping your mouth shut, you're no better off than them. The only difference is, is they don't, they're not following Jesus, so to speak, say maybe, maybe not. Not saying follow him, but they're not confessing him. But here you are confessing Jesus Christ, but yet you can't even stand up for righteousness and holiness and warn your neighbor about their sins. Shame on you, Christians. Shame on anybody that cannot, that, that says that they, that they believe in God, but yet they won't obey him and, and share the gospel of repentance because God's wrath is going to be poured out one day on the world. Literally, God is coming back in flaming fire to seek vengeance on all of you who do not obey the gospel. Clear and simple. Clearly written right here in the Word of God. Let me read it. Here's uh, Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doeth judge and make war. His eyes were as flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. And he was clothed with... Vesture dipped in blood, 
and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which are in heaven follow him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth cometh a sharp sword, that with it he smite, he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with an iron rod, a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of his fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Praise the living God, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to come down and stomp the, you know, the wrath out. He's going to stomp you out, that great press, uh, that, one, that press. He's going to press you out. He's going to press you sinners out. He's going to stomp you out. And yet here you are. You still have the breath of life. Are you going to choose today? whom you're going to serve? Are you going to turn from your sins today? Or are you just going to stay in your filth? Are you going to stay in your vomit? Are you going to just uh, build up wrath for on the day of judgment? Are you just going to keep storing up wrath on the day for on the day of judgment? Or are you going to turn your life around before it's too late? Come on. It's your decision. Wake up. This decision is not mine. My, de my decision I've already made. I, I chose to serve the Lord. And now God says, tells me in his word to go preach the gospel. <laughs> By the top of my, at the top of my lungs, crying aloud, lifting up my voice like a trumpet. I'm going to trumpet my voice. Thank God for, uh, you know, that we got all this, uh, these gadgets here. And we are to take advantage of the gadgets because everything that you have at your hands, television, radio, intercoms, whatever it is, your cars, it's all for the glory of God. That's it. It's all to blanket the, the world with the gospel. That's all technology is for. Even though the world uses it to serve their flesh and to serve the devil, all technology, that 1%, if that, that is used for God's glory, it is used to blanket the world with the gospel. Look how many people I can reach right now, right here, by myself, one man. Did you know one saint, one, one, one preacher sends like 10,000 uh, demons of flight? Did you know that? And then it, it even, the number even increases more so if there's more than one here. I'm sending them demons a flight. They might be getting stirred up inside of you. Well, you better get to casting them out. But don't cast out a demon if you're not willing to give your life to the Lord. Because if you cast out demons and you're not willing to forgive, uh, for, forsake your sins and give your life to the Lord, the Bible says that seven more that are way worse than the first, the ones that you kicked out will come up and, and, and sup with you. And you're going to be worse off than you were. Praise the living God today. Before it's too late. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Just in case you don't, you don't know what the uh, sorcerer is, that's a drug user, that's a drug seller, that's a, a pothead, cigarette smoker, pill poppers, those are sorcerers. In case nobody knows what a sorcerer is, those are, that's what a sorcerer is. And if you're doing any of those things, you're going to be, well, what's the Bible say? Fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's where you're going. If you don't give it up, that's where you're going. That's the word of God right here. Ain't, there's no uh, arguing about it. You can argue with me about it, but I'm not going to listen to you because the Bible says it clear as day. Clear as day. Praise the living God. Saying, the spirit of it. Can you show me one instance in the New Testament or the Old Testament where either a prophet or the disciple was sent out by themselves? He sent them by two for a reason. I hear you. You were the one who yelled at me. I said, hey, John the Baptist preached a lot alone. All the disciples preached alone. They didn't always go into Paris. Show me that. Like I said, show me the Well, here. 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 Hey, just Google it, man. You don't need me. Open up the Word of God for yourself. Hey, Jonah. You know Jonah, the city of Nineveh, alone. 
by himself, preaching for 40 days. Jonah, alone, preaching by himself for 40 days. There's one example right there, my friend. God bless you. God bless you, man. What you got going on in your life? Are you still using? Are you drinking? Because there's a reason why you want to why you want to silence a solo preacher. There's a reason for it. God bless you, my friend. another angel flying in the midst of heaven having everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people saying with a loud voice fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the foundations of the water Get to worshiping the Lord, my friends, before it's too late. Come on, come on, come on. Praise the living God today. All glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. There's joy in the Lord. Unspe uh, 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 unspeakable. You can't even put it in the words. But yet, when you're a preacher of righteousness out here preaching, there's great sorrow, too. There's great, uh, the, the heart of a, of a saint uh, is suffering and hurts and weeps over what he sees in the world. And I'm so, it just breaks my heart so much to see that you're not, give, that, that we're not giving God the glory that he deserves. deserves if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their lands praise the living God if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves humble themselves not pride not not being prideful god resists the proud but he gives grace to the humble god hates a proud look but he gives grace to the humble you know the pride flag in the back break room of walmart that you're shoving down employees faces and in their throats whether they like it or not it's not it's about protecting and, 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 and throwing all that nonsense into the world to make it acceptable when it's not acceptable in the eyes of the Lord that it leads to destruction, to death. What's the most loving thing? It's to tell you to throw that pride flag in the garbage and stop living those sexual immoralities. Stop living uh, that reprobate mentality that you have. That thing that God hates. That lifestyle that God hates. There's not even fornication in there in a man and a woman. The pride flag is all based on sexual immoralities. It's all things that are against nature. The one thing, everything that's against God created them male and female. That's the pride flag. It's not, it has nothing to do with male and female in holy matrimony, which is the one and only way. Pride flag celebrates all sexual dysfunctions. That's what the pride flag's about. That's what LGBTQPB and any other letters that you want to add to that to that group of abominations. It's there, and yet what what are we doing today? Uh, we're allowing it to be taught to our children in our schools, in our superstores. Uh, we're 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 allowed, we're put there being this stuff is being forced upon us and numbing us because we. There you go, you must be a homo supporter. 
There you go. There's a finger right there. Praise the living God. Flip it off the preacher when all he wants you to do is give your life to the Lord and be saved. Here it is again. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their lands. There you go. Don't you want your lands? Don't you want to be healed? At least make your decision. I mean, you people, you're not going to turn to the Lord? Well, at least you turn to the Lord. Right? Choose this day whom you're going to serve. Gather yourself before the, before the Lord. Don't neglect yourself before the Lord. Especially that you see that day drawn nigh. You should be drawing yourself unto the Lord. Nobody else, just you. Drawing yourself unto the Lord. Drawing nigh unto the Lord. You and the Lord. Parents, very important that you do it. That way you can get your kids on the right path. And teach them up in the way they should go. Parents, father. We shouldn't have any broken homes. But we have broken homes because men want to fulfill the lust of the flesh. And they don't want to do it God's way. Same thing with women. You know how women are saved? They're saved through childbearing. Childbearing. Giving, having children. Not going out and getting jobs. Not going out being police officers and military. Not going out being servants under uh, mayors and presidents and stuff like that. No, that's for men. A woman is to be home with the children, raising them up in obedience to the Lord while the, the husband is out working, providing for his family. That's how God intended it. That's how God says to be. There's a blanket. There. There's an umbrella there. If you're living by the Word of God, that umbrella of God would be over you. But you're not living by the Word of God. You're living in sin. You're living for yourself. You're, you're dressing like a, like, a, like, like a whore. And you men are, are mongering whores. Yes, that's a biblical word. God calls any woman that is out there dressed according is a whore. If, you're lo if you look like a whore, you're just like a whore, you're going to get the word of God calls you a whore. You're a Jezebel. That's not my words, and it ain't hateful to preach it. Look at yourself in the mirror. If your butt cheeks are hanging out, your breasts are hanging out, and you're putting all this lipstick on and jewelry and, and, and all this expensive attire, that's the attire of a harlot, of a Jezebel, not a child of God, not a woman of God. A woman of God is meek and quiet and silent. I could look it up and I could read the list to you. If I could find it. up here, but here he goes. There's some more Bible verses for you. Love not the world. It, right, there it is, right from the Word of God. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. See it? You hear it? Love not the world, nor love the things in the world. If any man love the world, hear that? If any man or woman loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You hear that? If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Right? Clear day right here out of the Word of God. Out of the mouth of God. Literally, the Scripture. There it is, right there. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. Warning! Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord today. 
wake up sinners wake up to holiness and become a saint today because only God is only going to save the saints he's not going to save the sinners all have sinned yes all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God but God does not refer to his people as sinners they are saints they are redeemed they are forgiven they're not God doesn't call his followers sinners if you confess to be a sinner then yes I will take your word for it you are a sinner but don't push your iniquities on me because I already know that I have the ability to obey the gospel and I do and so do you but you don't want to give up your sin and until you give up your sin, you're going to be in darkness and you're not going to understand the preaching at all. You can agree with it to an extent. You can agree with it to an extent, but you're still going to be in darkness if you're not going to turn from your sin. Give it up. God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment and spared not the old world and saved Noah and eight persons and preacher, a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood. You see, for God so loved the world, right, that he killed every living soul except eight people. There's another exa there's an example right there on uh, what's going to happen to the sinners. Unto judgment and spared not the old world, but saved Noah and the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. There's a flood coming, but it's not going to be water. It's going to be fire, the wrath of God. That's what's coming next. Not water. God's rainbow, take this in note, God's rainbow, you pride people, is the promise that God's not going to flood the world again. It's not a symbol of pride. It's pretty sad that you would take God's rainbow and make pride out of it. That is sad. Sad, sad, sad. And yet here they are hanging that pride flag on churches saying all are welcome. When only people that are welcome in God's church on this earth are saints. You can come to the church, but if you're not willing to forsake your sins, homosexuals, drunkards, and thieves, and anything else that's on the list of sins, if you're not willing to give it up, the churches are commanded to drive you out. That you're not to be a part of that congregation. If you're not willing to get cleaned up in obedience to the gospel, you do not belong in a church. Period. And if the church accepts you and doesn't get you to, to walk that straight and narrow, that's a dead church. And that's a church for you. If a church allows you to live your lifestyle, then stay there. But if you want to give your life to the Lord, you better go find a holiness church, a righteous church that believes in repentance, because without repentance, there is no forgiveness of sin. Period. Michael. Nice to meet you too. What's your name? Red Norgard. Red Norgard? Shake my hand. Praise God. Amen, brother. Amen. Are you a brother? Hi. Or are you working on it? I'm... Or you just don't want to give your life to the Lord? What is it, brother? You don't want to submit? What you, what you got going on in your life? Seriously, what you got going on? What you got going on, man? You like to smoke that weed or what? Get high? Uh, I know. I've been there, bro. I've been there. Uh, I just, you, still got uh, breath, you still got time, no? Breath of life. You know, praise God. Everybody, everybody has a different... Uh, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. That's it. Oh, Not, without a doubt. Okay, without then. A doubt. Okay, then. Just, you don't say it about everybody because there's yeah. only one way. And, and it's obedience to the gospel. It's yeah, they say not that, our ways. They say that the Messiah will come from the, the people of Shem. The Messiah is going to part the sky you know when the, he comes back. You know who the people of Shem are? <laughs> Brother, I, I'm not concerned about that. God has already came and, and reigned on the earth as an innocent little lamb. And he, he's already parted to be with the Father. When Jesus comes, he's going to part the sky. Literally. That's it, man. No, no, no. Anyways, I, God bless you. No, no. You're God right. bless you. you. Do your thing. I'm doing what the Lord commands me to do, actually. Hey, it's not well, my thing. It's God's thing. Hey. God bless you, though. No, no. That's good on you. Good. Amen. I, blessings on that. Yeah, yeah. On you, too. God bless you, my friend.
Yes, I love the wellness. The wellness and love the Lord. Praise the living God. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Praise God. Read that again. First Peter chapter 4, verse 1 through 2. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that hath suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men but to the will of God praise God Getting hot. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Praise God. Hour and 25 minutes, eh? All right, all right, all right. Praise the living God today. Amen.
praise the living God. Praise God today. <laughs> praise God. Loving thy neighbor. Man. This is love. Love is to warn about the wrath to come. Um, those that God loves, he rebukes and chastens. You know? He's going to rebuke you and chasten you if, if he loves you. And those, you know, with a strong rebuke, you know, comes love. And I'm going to rebuke the sinner because I love you. I'm going to tell you about your sin and that it separates you from God. It's because I love you. Don't you want to give your life to the Lord? Don't hate the preacher. You know your sin separates you from God. I mean, if you... If you're really been giving up that much to your sin, I I feel sorry for you. I don't. I mean, like being given up to your sin by God because you're not willing to forsake your sins and turn from them. Being a reprobate, man. I just hope that that's not you. That there's still hope for you. I mean, I see the breath of life, and I, all I can see is there's hope. I see that hope. I know there's hope. I know that God's grace and mercy is, is there to, for the taking. But to receive God's grace is to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts and, 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 and sobriety. Praise the living God. Here's how you know if you know God. Okay? And hereby we do know that we know Him. If we keep His commandments, He that saith, I know Him, and keepeth not His commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in Him. This is how you know if you know God. Hereby we do know that we know Him. If we keep His commandments, he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Very clear. If you're living in sin, you don't know the Lord. Absolutely clear right here. In just one spot. That's just one spot. There's several spots in the Bible. <laughs> not just the one. But yet here you are, and here we are, and here we have people that still confess to know Jesus and they're saved but yet they don't forsake their sins. The Bible is right there, it says right there. That you're in darkness, that you're, what's it say? He that says, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. There it is, crystal clear. And that's just one spot, there is place after place after place after place in the Word of God. And I come here to preach against um, sinful lifestyles. And I'm going to be hated for it. Oh, well. I'd rather be loved by God and hated by the world than to be loved by the world and hated by God. I would rather be loved by God, which is in, in His Scripture only, as my life is my life is in scripture only and be hated by the world than to be of the world and hated by God. Considering the fact that God's word clearly says that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God. Clear as day, I can open it up and read it. James chapter 4 verse 4. Here it is. Ye 
adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever Again, whosoever therefore, therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth after envy? But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resists the proud, there it is, but giveth grace unto the humble, there it is. Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Look at that. <laughs> How more plain can you get? Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. You hear that? Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. And purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Stop being double-minded. You're either living in the world, or you're living for God. Quit trying to quit going back way, both ways. Choose this day to serve the Lord. Period. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter return. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. There you go. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. There you go. And he shall lift you up. You see, hear that? And he shall lift you up. Praise the living God. Praise God. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Let your laughter return to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Yes, the Lord will lift you up. But you have to forsake your sins, your pride, your wickedness, your ungodliness, your selfishness. Your self thoughts, your ways. You gotta surrender them and give yourself unto the Lord, which is to open the Word of God, to submit to the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the way, the truth, and the life. If you're not gonna draw nigh unto the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the living Word of God, then you're gonna perish. Plain and simple. Not hard to understand. Clear as day, as the, according to the gospel and the word of God, you can judge yourself, and I can judge by the scripture. A righteous man judges all things, and yet he is judged by no man. He who obeys the gospel bears good fruit and can judge a tree by its fruit. It's very easy to know a lukewarm Christian. It's very easy to know somebody who don't even confess to be Christian. It's simple, easy to understand. Do you obey the gospel? Oh, I'm trying to. You're a lukewarm Christian, trying. The Bible says to obey him. It doesn't say try. It says to obey him. It does not say try. Trying is not good enough. Trying, trying means you're giving in to something that God hates. You're not willing to forsake your sins? Well, if you're not willing to forsake your sins, there's a day called Judgment Day coming. Praise the living God that you still have the breath of life. Praise the living God that you still have the opportunity to turn your life around and start obeying the Word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Without holiness, if you're not going to live a holy life, you're not going to see God except on the day of judgment. When you're bound hand and foot, you better wake up. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devil also believes and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? What kind of works are we talking about? You know, the Bible says you're saved by faith. Faith alone, right? Well, what's it saying right here? Faith without works is dead. What kind of 
works are we talking about here? F works meant for repentance. Do you hear that? Works meant for repentance. Repentance of what? What separates you from God? That's the re where the repentance lies. What are you repenting of? Everything that separates you from God. That's what you're repenting. Faith without works is dead. Unless you repent of your sins, there is no faith. You have no works unto salvation, which is not a work. It's, it's a love. To forsake your sins is to love the Lord. When you're living in sin, you're doing works unto death. Not unto salvation. When you're obeying the gospel, you're doing works unto salvation. That's the good stuff. That's the stuff that you want to do. Not the good works of going helping a little old lady across the street. Not the works of giving your money to somebody. That's the stuff you do in private. Praying in private. Like they, you don't want to be like the hypocrites who pray on the street corners. No, on the street corners you should go out and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of repentance. It starts with repentance. If you haven't learned to repent of your sins, then you're still on the repentance of the gospel. None of the rest of the gospel applies to you until you turn from your sins. All scripture is dead to you until you turn from all your sins. That's why Jesus Christ said it first. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Luke 13, 3. Repent or perish. Jesus Christ said it. John 8, 11. Go and sin no more. That's not the only place Jesus said go and sin no more. Look it up. Get in your word. Let, encouraging you today to open up the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Wake up, man. You might read something that will catch your attention. The Holy Spirit will convict you or, or fill you with some kind of, of his spirit. That's where it starts. That's where salvation starts. It's when you start in the word of God. And then you start listening to it and need your ears. Maybe God will open your ears so you'll have an ear to hear and a heart to repent. And God will change that heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. You got to get that heart of stone out and get that new heart of flesh. That way you're not going to be so offended when the preacher comes out and preaches holiness and repentance of sins or you're going to perish. God is angry with the sinners every day. He's not up there with all this, he's up there, you better repent because I'm getting ready to part the sky. You better turn from your sins. I'm, I'm going to give you another day, another moment to breathe. You better wake up because my, I know when I'm going to take your soul. And then, when, and then that day comes, it's going to come as a thief in the night. Some people get, to got, get diseases because of sin, that's why we got it. Or, or some kind of sexually transmitted disease or something else. Or, or maybe they'll get bit by a snake. Look it, you got you got time to repent there, don't you? You got time to cry out to the Lord there, don't you? Praise God. Praise God. Amen. You got time to cry out to the Lord there, don't you? But what about people like, well, I'll use an example. My brother, J.D., who was killed when he was 28 years old and I was 30. He was out getting drunk, hanging out in the bar, and he left with some woman and probably went out and fornicated with her. And on the way back home, two miles from home, they hit a tree and killed the both of them. He is not going to inherit the kingdom of God. He is not in a better place. And I'm saying that about my own brother, the one I was raised with. I'm the oldest. And then my baby sister, here about eight months ago, I was at my mom's house because my brother Christopher had come to visit from Oregon. I just got done preaching in front of the courthouse. And you know what's crazy is the day before that, I told the Lord, I said, no matter what you did, even if you took another one of my siblings, I would still serve you. And guess what? The next day, God took my baby sister from me. And I'm still here serving the Lord. But anyways, I got done preaching. And uh, my little brother was in my mom's car because my sister was driving my mom's car. 
and I seen my brother in my mom's car, and my brother said, G Michael, pull over, pull over, pull over. And I said, what? He said, Brandy is dead. They found her dead in a shed on Pomo Lane because she mixed a, a drug with her, or a med with her medication and it killed her. And she was on a tender date. She has no more grace, no more mercy. She died in her sins. God bless you in your fingers, sir. God bless you. Amen. Praise the living God. Praise God. People hate holiness because they're living in darkness. If you want to flip off the preacher, I thank God I'm, I'm blessed. I don't like to see it, but God says that I'm blessed for it. That I'm receiving and all I want to receive is God. That's it. I don't care about the gifts and the treasures in heaven. I just want to be with the Lord. I just want to serve God and, and obey Him and, and live a holy life. And I want to cry out to the Lord and to my neighbor to give your life to the Lord before it's too late. And that day is going to come to an end. And then there's going to be no more grace and no more mercy. So wake up before it's too late. I'm not hating on my neighbor. I'm telling you the truth. That there's a day coming. It's called Judgment Day, and now's the time to get ready. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. 
and no man goes to the Father except by him. You see that? One way right there. That's a brother right there. If he obeys the gospel, I pray that, I hope that he does. He hears the word and he's putting it the one way. So praise God. That means he's not offended by the preacher. But if you're living in sin and you're offended, no, well, that's good. You're not being given up. Praise God. You're still you're being convicted. You might be resistant of the of the preaching, but there's something happening there. That's better than nothing at all. Praise God. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. What's the marriage? It's between a man and a woman in holy matrimony. Praise the living God. That a man is to leave his mother and father and to join to his wife, and they are to become one flesh, and they are to multiply the earth. Praise the living God. That's, that's a life. That's the life. Not the pride flag and the sexual immoralities that are being thrown in our face that people are trying to protect, that the world and TikTok are protecting, and the government, the devil knows what he's doing. It started out, I remember when I was driving a tow truck uh, back in 2007, 8, 9, it started out with the rainbow and, and tell our kids about the future. That's what it was. 13 years ago, it was about a rainbow and tell our kids about the future. Now look what's going on. We got the rainbow flag in our schools saying love is love uh, and, and, and all this sexual perversity. Our teachers are now becoming LGBTQ and teaching our kids and flying their flags in our, pri in our grades, in our elementary schools, in our, in our middle schools, and in our high schools. The devil is, is, is <laughs> he's, getting his, he's getting his message across. I'm going to get mine across. God is going to destroy the wicked. God's grace and mercy is not going to apply if you're going to die in your sin. You better repent because the wrath of God, we're not talking about the wrath of man, we're talking about the wrath of God is coming for you. another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. Don't you see that day approaching? <laughs> I do. A lot of people do. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. It's a good time to repent. Stop nummifying the blood of Christ. God's blood will wash away your sins. All of them. If you but just give your life to the Lord. Literally give your life to the Lord. Not all I believe and then go about your day. No. Literally give your life to the Lord. Open up the Word of God and leave it open and leave it up in forefront of your life the rest of your days. That would be you holding fast, holding fast to the Scripture every day. It's the only thing that's going to keep you, the Word of God is the only thing that's going to keep you in the grace of God. If you fall away from the Gospel, you fall away from God.
as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. It's appointed unto you, your life, and then to die, and then the judgment. Turn away from those things that are going to judge you. Turn away from those things that are going to separate you from God. There's no exception. You're going to bow to a holy God one day. People that hate the Lord, that hate the preachers, because you hate God. You love something, some, some sin, some ungodliness, some darkness, some pathetic you deserve to get the, 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 the wages that you have coming. I deserve, I don't deserve salvation. No way. Not even close. I deserve eternal separation from God. I don't deserve God's grace and mercy. And the more that I give to the Lord, the more I see how much I don't deserve God's grace. But yet he pours his love out on us while we were yet a sinner. He died on that cross. But now he commands all men everywhere to repent. If you die in your sins, you're going to perish. that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, present world, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, from all sin, you know, <laughs> and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Zealous of good works. Can't you tell? I'm zealous for good works. All glory to God. It's because we're creating the image of God. And when you give your life to the Lord, you're, you're living. You're created in God. You're not created, or, and you weren't born a sinner. You were born into sin. But God, when He formed you in your mother's womb, you were lovingly formed in your mother's womb. And the Bible says, when you were born, you were born upright. Do you know that uh, God's word says that, that heaven? Heaven is full of little children. All these little babies that have passed away, all these babies that the, you mothers have aborted, uh, they're in heaven with the Lord. You know, God says in His Word that He hates the hand that sheds innocent blood. And how can you get any more innocent than killing the, old, the child that is developed, being developed by loving hands, the Lord, in your womb? That's supposed to be the most safest place for a baby. But yet it's not. You're sacrificing your baby unto Baal. You know what God says for those that offend the little children? You know, it'd be better that you have a millstone tied around your neck than to cause a little child to stumble, which is... To, to, fall, to not be in the Word of God, not to be raised up in the Gospel, to live into a lifestyle that is contrary to the Word of God, like uh, lesbians that are allowed to adopt little children. First of all, God bless you, first of all, lesbianism is an abomination unto the Lord. And homosexual men, they have no business adopting children either. It's an abomination. It'd be better that you have a millstone tied around your neck and be cast into the depths of the sea because you are causing a little child to stumble when it's not between a man and a woman in holy matrimony. Or raising a child up if you have a broken family, if you're by yourself, but if there is no, you don't throw that sexual immorality in a child's face. You don't go take two women and start kissing in front of a little kid and say, here's your mommy and your other mommy. That's an abomination unto the Lord.
You want to see what God says about a woman? <laughs> Here you are. In like manner, also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broad, braided hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly array, but which becometh a woman professing godliness with good works. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over a man, but to be in silence. For Adam was created first and formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Praise the living God. There it is, women. Read it. Open up the Word of God. 1 Timothy chapter 2, starting at verse 9. Praise God. That's for you women. Men too. Men too. conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Right? <laughs> right? Clear as day. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel. Amen. Praise the living God. The word that is magnified above all things. That's it. Take every book in the library and burn it. Take every book that was written by man and burn it. It's going to be burned one day. Everything in this created earth, God's going to melt with a fervent heat because of sin. And he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. And this is going to be the only book that's going to stand for eternity. This is the only book that's going to be standing for eternity. And every living soul that is going to be saved by the grace of God and what he did on the cross and for those that love the Lord are going to glorify this gospel, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll be able to wrap our arms around God because God emptied himself of his glory and become a man. He is the visible image of God. And I'm going to get to live my life of eternity if I hold fast till the end. I will get to sup with the Lord for eternity. And you can do the same thing. You can have the same opportunity as I do. And all you got to do is submit to the Lord and love him and you'll be saved. And to love the Lord is to obey the gospel. Praise the living God today.
Jesus Christ said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be condemned. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I'm here preaching the gospel to you, every creature. God says, go God says go into all the world and preach the gospel to you. All the world. And that's not the only place. There's plenty of places in the Bible that refer to open air preaching. To proclaiming the gospel. That is the labor that God is talking about, where he talks about in Luke 10, 2. The laborers are few, obviously, but the harvest is plentiful. That's a plentiful harvest that God is talking about, but I don't see it right now. Maybe it's later. Maybe that plentiful harvest is when Jesus Christ comes down and reigns on the earth for a thousand years. Maybe there's a, sec maybe there's a chance if you don't take the mark of the beast. Maybe you'll be given a second chance if you're not raptured because you're not a true, because you're not a faithful and trustful servant. Maybe if you're one of those people who do not take the mark of the beast, maybe you're one of those people that God's not going to stomp out on that day when he comes down to stomp out the children of, the, uh, of wrath, those that have taken the mark of the beast. Maybe you will be having a, a, an opportunity but maybe not. Maybe God's coming down to stomp you out too. Maybe God's just coming down to stomp out all the sinners and wicked and unrepentant. And then he's going to reign on this earth with the saints for that thousand years. Or maybe the saints are going to rule the world with an iron rod. And, and you're going to live a life. And maybe you're going to be able to live how God wants you to live. How, according to a scripture. Because God's going to reign on this earth for a thousand years. Maybe you'll give it a second chance, but are you going to wait to find that out? Because I'm actually thinking that and saying that out loud. Oh, I can uh, maybe uh, and take my chances. No, give your life to the Lord now so that you can be of the kingdom of God. Praise the living God today. Praise God today. He is worthy. He died on the cross. He went through that. The most torturous death, which was the worst way to go, which, which is to be hung and whipped or nailed to a cross. Excruciating pain. And he went there and didn't say a word. He did it because it was the will of the Father, and he freely chose. God said, Jesus Christ said, not my will, but thy will be done. And he died on the cross for you and me. Praise God. Going, Donnie. All right. It's good. Um, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to hear you if you're trying to teach me something, man. Look, dude. Because I, I already know your life. Why are you trying to teach everybody and, and get on that? Look, dude. I'm just showing you right, something. Right. I'm just showing you patience. Right. Four third. third um, Read it to me. Like, you act as if I'm just. I'm you just God, but I know you're living. Mind. Dude, you're dude, not judging people. Exactly. You're not judging people. I am, man. Dude, look. It says, do not claim down with, dude. Try to claim them down with a gentle answer, Proverbs. Right, that's, one, that's okay, one scripture. Okay. I, I'm going with the whole word. Stop down. being bitter and angry no, and mad and angry. at others. I'm not mad. Don't yell at one another, cursing. Amen. I'm not mad. Other... Amen. I'm preaching, bro. Ephesians. I'm preaching, brother. I'm not mad. I'm not. I'm preaching the gospel. No, <laughs> just keep on laughing. I'll keep it up, brother. Dude, you're looking oh, down friend, on people. That, dude, you're... No, I'm telling people to repent. God bless you, man. God bless you. Anyways, dude. Have a nice day. Thanks. Give your give your life to the Lord before it's too late, my friend. For the hardness of your heart, he has wrote you this verse. See, he can't, he's been hearing the word all day, and I've been reading it right, and he can't even understand it. He can't even understand it. That's how much your sin gives, delusions you from the truth. For the, for the hardness of your, of your heart, he wrote you this prospect. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. And for this God cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and cleave to his wife, 
and they twine shall become one flesh. Then are no more but one flesh, right? Praise the living God. And what therefore God hath joined together, let not man put us under. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words, that would be you, in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. You're ashamed of the gospel. That's your problem. He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the just, both of them alike are an abomination unto the Lord. I've been doing I've been here just reading verbatim from the Word of God, and, and I'm being cursed by somebody who wants to open the Word of God. You know, the devil comes as, as an angel of light and as ministers of righteousness, and they go right to the Word of God. They go right to the Word of God, except they only give, they only come up with what uh, would silence the preacher. Well, they think would silence the preacher. <laughs> Playing that funny game, huh? Hell yeah, man, that funny game. That funny yeah, that funny game's not going to work for you on the Day of Judgment, my friend. You better wake up. I can't, what'd you say? Then, then laugh, but have joy in the Lord. Have fun, but have fun in the joy of the Lord and obedience to Him. Praise God. Yes, the trumpet is being sound. Praise the living God. One way, right there. There's a man that approves of the, of the preaching. If that finger stays up, he does. See that? See, God's word does not return void. It's either going to, you agree with it, or it's going to judge you one day, or it's going to judge you one day, or it's going to judge you one day, or the Word of God is going to judge you one day. The Word of God is going to judge. Let it judge you now, which is you submitting to it in obedience to the Word, the love of the Gospel, the life, the, the, the work of the Word of God is under salvation to them that obey the Lord in His Word. Praise God, because He is the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us, Emmanuel. Praise the living God. Where are you getting your wisdom at, sorcerers? Where are you getting your wisdom at? Smoking a little bit of marijuana? Getting in the gospel of Jesus Christ? Shame on you. Coming to those spirits, familiar spirits, they're not gods, they're not, they're not, it's not the spirit of God, it's a familiar spirit, but it ain't the spirit of God, the spirit of God, it's all scripture, only scripture, nothing outside of it, it's purely scripture, no thought of man, only the thought of God, only thing, the, the man who's under the, the, the guidance, in, in the drive of the scripture, that's a man who's under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, who sticks to the Word of God only. That's it. He doesn't use the Word of God for his own benefit, for his own, well, other than his salvation, but, but to, uh, to justify uh, my sins. Uh, no, the Word of God is to be proclaimed and preached out loud. The Bible is very clear. To cry aloud, to spare not, to lift up the gospel, to trumpet the word of God, whether you want to hear it or not. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruits corrupt. For the tree is known by its by its fruit. O generations of vipers, how can ye be evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth shall speak. 
I'll just read some scriptures. Don't come against the reading of the Bible then. Okay, my friend? Don't come against the reading of the Bible. And a good man, out of the good treasures of his heart, bringeth forth good fruit, good things. And an evil man, out of the evil of treasures, bringeth forth evil fruit. But I say unto you, that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. And whosoever shall not receive ye nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust off your feet. <laughs> Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you forth a sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will d deliver you up to councils, and they will scourge, scourge you in their synagogues, and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in time, in the same hour, what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother and, and the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father to the children to the child, and the child uh, shall raise up against their parents, and against them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, Flee ye into another, for verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Man, sending them demons of flight. I hear it. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yeah, and all the do wickedly, shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as, as calves of the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Praise the living God. Praise God. Oh, I love the word. Oh, yes, I do. Praise the living God. I, I have great joy in the word of God. If you want to call it pride, you can. It has no effect on me. I love the Lord, and I'm going to obey Him. Praise the living God. If that's boasting to you, well, good for you. That's because you are of your father, the devil. Actually, it don't. I want you to give your life to the Lord and stop living as the devil. That's what I want. What would make me feel better is if you stop resisting and stop living in sin, put away that marijuana cigarette and all that stuff, and then I would love to, to sup with you as a brother. Amen. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the conscience, the heart is made better. The heart of the wise is in the house. Amen. God bless me right here. I got a blessing right here from this, this fine young woman right here and that little child. God bless me. God bless. Yes, God blesses his children. And his children bless those that are blessing. 
because we are the body of Christ. You're either of the body of Christ or you're not. God bless you too, sister. Hey, sister, do you need... You're good? I can help you out if you need it. You're good? Okay. God bless you. The heart of the wise is in the house of the morning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. Are you in the house of mirth? <laughs> Are you? Are you in the house of the wise, the Lord? He's the wise house. Open up that, let that door open up your heart, your, your, let Jesus Christ into your heart. Open that door. Let him in. Let the Lord in today. I'm going to read a couple of very uh, firm gospel uh, verses, a few, and then I'm going to call it a day, okay? Okay? I'll give you, those of you that are having a hard time with this, I'm, I'm, I'm almost done, okay? And, and I'm going to go about my day. I'm either going to go preach somewhere else, <laughs> but I'm going to go be in my word. I'm going to go be, and I'm going to go be with the Lord. That's not going to change. That's going to be my life. That is my life. Praise the living God. I'm not boasting. I'm telling you. That's where you need to be. Leviticus 18, 22 through 24. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusion. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things, for in all this the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. See how that just starts out with, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. Right to the homosexuals. And then it goes right to sleeping with an animal. All in the same paragraph. That's the word of God. Right there, clear as day. How about Leviticus 20, chapter 13? If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination, they shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. And if a man take a wife and her mother, it is wickedness. They shall be burnt with fire, both he and they, that there be no wickedness among you. And if a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death, and he shall slay the beast. And if a woman approaches unto any beast, and lie down thereto, thou shalt kill the woman and the beast, they shall surely be put to death, their blood shall be upon them. There's another verse that goes right from homosexuals, right to sleeping with an animal. <laughs> right there, the word of God. I know you're going to come against it. I know, I know, I know. I'm preaching hate. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But God hates all workers of iniquity. He's not going to cast the sin into hell. He's going to forget the sin. He's going to cast the sinner, the sinner into hell. Not the sin, but the sinner. Get that right. Figure that out. I hear some people say, oh, God hates the sin but loves the sinner. Oh, he died for you, but he's not going to cast your sin into hell. He's going to cast you into hell if you don't repent. And this is going to be the last verse I'm going to read. And I'm going to do this for my friend over here. No, no names, but my friend. He, I mean, he could be my enemy. To me, I might be his enemy because I'm preaching. 
and, he, and he's angry with me. But I love my enemies and I love my friends. And with that being said, here's my final verse, verses of the day. Take a guess which verse that will be. Let me guess, it starts with an R. There's the last verses of the day for right now. Praise the living God. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds. and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also give them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who was blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God give them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meek. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Amen. And praise God. That's my final verse to the day. God bless you guys. <laughs> I'm actually wrapping it up right now. Yeah, I'm good.
Well, wouldn't you know, I got to finish my sermon and as the cops showed up. But guess what? He wasn't here to stop me. God bless you, man. Have a nice day. How you doing? It says Jesus Christ is our only hope and homo sex is sin. Yeah. You want to get a picture of that? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. you. Everybody sins, though. Well, everybody has sinned. Not okay. everybody sins. You're not sinning anymore? No, I give my life to the Lord. You know what that is? That's a sin. That's I know. Called, that's, that's a I sin. know. I know it is. That's, that's why. a sick sin. It that's is a, a really sick sin. It is, isn't it? Amen. Karma is a bitch, too. What's up? Hey, could you hear me from your house? Could you hear me from your house? Oh man. Hey, your your truck smells like gas, dude. The old commission car. Praise God. Well. Praise the living God. Now's the time to uh, call this uh, two hours and 28 minutes of preaching until the next outreach. May the Lord richly bless you. Amen.